everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this sweater, cat sweater, with the roll neck. So thanks very much for being here, we really appreciate it, and hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hope to catch you soon. Thanks, bye. Okay, so for this project you'll need some yarn. If you want the chunky effect um, that I'm going for, then you'll want at least a bulky weight yarn. Um, this one here works up really well. I've used it in a few of these sweaters and it works up really well. It's a 75% acrylic and 25% nylon. And I think on account of the nylon, it gives it, 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 gives it a, a good fit without restricting movement. So it's got a bit of, of give in it and uh, yeah, it seems to work up really well in this pattern. So if you can find something similar, then I'd recommend it. Otherwise, you can um, make some adjustments in the sizing as you go and you know, you can use any type of, of bulky weight yarn. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter in this case. You'll probably want some stitch markers. Now I find them really handy in this project, but you may or may not want to use them. But if you've got something um, that you can use to mark some stitches, then um, it's probably a good idea to have them close. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends, some scissors to snip your ends, and you'll need a tape measure to take some measurements from your cat. Oh, and just to mention, um, you'll need, for a small sweater, you'll be needing at least 100 metres of yarn. Um, for a large, you might need up to around 200 metres, depending entirely on the size that you're, you're going up to. But you'll need at least 100 metres. For a medium-sized cat, you need around 120 to 150 metres. Okay, so the stitches and techniques that you'll need to know to make these sweaters is how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to single crochet, how to single crochet in the back loop only, which will create this ribbed effect on the neck band here. You'll need to know how to slip stitch. You'll need to know how to triple crochet. This is the main part of the sweater is in triple crochet. Uh, you'll need to know how to triple crochet increase, triple crochet decrease, You'll need to know how to weave in your ends, how to tie on um, to create this back portion and the sleeves. So the sleeves are just optional. You don't have to add the sleeves. Um, you may or may not need to use a single crochet decrease. Um, that will depend on a few different things and I'll talk about that later. Um, and you will be shown, I'll show you how to um, make this seam here, which kind of disguises, it's not completely hidden, but it, it disguises a little the seam down the, the, side, uh, the center here. And I think that's pretty much it. So, okay, actually, I'll just give you a few notes here, quick notes here on sizing, but I'll be talking about sizing all the way through. Now, you know, sizing these things is not always the easiest. Different cats have different proportions. And I'm going to hopefully give you a pattern where you can tailor the size to your cat. So there's not going to be any set sizes. It's going to be um, very much customizable to your cat. And mostly we'll be working from the measurement that you take for your neck circ circumference. So... For example, um, so this is a loose fitting neck, okay? It's not designed to be fitted around the neck. So uh, yeah, that's just the style that I've chosen for this one. And the size of the neck tends to dictate the rest size of the rest of the um, sweater. So there's a, there's, a, there's a basic assumption that when you get the measurement for the neck right, it'll kind of fall into place for the rest of the um, sweater. Now, that won't apply to cats who perhaps have a, a really wide neck in proportion to their body. Um, so you will have to customize and kind of check as you go. Um, and I'll, as we move through the, the process, I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can um, tailor your increases and decreases according to the size of your individual cat. Otherwise, you can just come along with me. And if your cat is kind of a, a you know, 
in in, in um, quotes normal proportioned cat, then you'll probably get um, the size that you need from the instructions that I'll give you here. But like I said, you can tailor it according to the increases and decreases you make. So that's all the notes I'll give you on sizing now, but we'll be talking about it all the way through. So let's get started. Okay, so before you start in on the crochet portion, just take uh, a measurement from your cat. Now measure around the circumference of their neck. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, exact, exact, but uh, Melba's neck is around 23, 24 centimetres. So I'm going to use that as my starting point. Um, yeah, so I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But for now, just uh, slip knot onto your hook, however you do that. And then you're going to chain 13. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Okay. So starting with the second chain from the hook, I'm going to add a single crochet. And then a single crochet in each chain all the way along row one. So 12 single crochets all the way along until you reach the end. So we're starting at the neck band and we're going to create this ribbed effect. Now this is folded over, so this is the neck band here. Okay, so we're starting with, with the neck band. So to create the ribs, we're going to be working single crochet into the back loop only. So chain one to move on to the next row, turn. In that first stitch place a single crochet, so into both loops, and then in the next 10 stitches place single crochets into the back loop only. So when you look at your stitches you've got the V, so you don't want to work into the loop closest to you, only work into the, the loop furthest away from you. And this will create this ribbed effect look. So all the way along and then on the ends you'll place a single crochet through both loops and that will just give us a slightly more structured side. So into the back loop only until you reach that last stitch and then place your hook through both loops and single crochet. Okay, so that's row two. Now you're just going to continue with repeating row two, chaining one and turning and then working your single crochets. So first stitch, last stitch into both loops and then the stitches in between into the back loop only. And remembering that measurement that you took at the beginning, the neck circumference. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that neck circumference and add 5 centimetres. So for example, again, Melba is 24. 324 centimeters. I'm going to use the 24 centimeter measurement and I'm going to add five centimeters to that. So I'm going to go with my work to a length of 29 centimeters. Okay, so use your neck circumference as the starting point for your measurement. So keep going with your neck band, working your rows just as we've been doing with repeating row two. 
and keep going until you reach the measurement that you calculate that you need for your cat. So the next circumference of your cat, add five centimeters. So I'll see you once I've reached my length of neck band. Okay, so I've got my length of neck band there. So just to recap, I've taken Melba's 24 centimeter neck circumference and added five centimeters. So I've got about 29 centimeters here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just slip stitch the two ends together to join. So chain one and place your ends together and then we're just going to slip stitch the corresponding stitches together. So what I like to do is just take the inner loop of the stitch and find my corresponding stitch and slip stitch to join. So just that simple, just slip stitching, just pull that tail out of the way, just slip stitching all the way along until you join these two ends together. So I'll finish doing that off camera and you finish doing yours and I'll meet you back here once we've done that. Okay, so I've slip stitched to join. Now just bring that to the center and then chain one. And then we're just gonna place single crochets at the end of each row all the way around. So start with a single crochet underneath your chain and then go into the top of each row. So it's not gonna be um, super easy to see exactly where to put your stitch, but you'll put one at the top of each row. So I've put one in that row there that row there, this row here. So just move all the way around, placing a single crochet just to tidy up that edge. One single crochet in each stitch all the way around or at the top of each row all the way around and I'll meet you, meet you once I get back here. Okay, so I'm just placing my last single crochet in this round. Now we're going to, like I said before in the technique section, what I'm going to do is show you how to create this um, seam here that's less visible than a normal seam. Now it's not invisible but it's less visible than a normal seam. So We'll start here. So just, it's a little bit tricky to do in these smaller stitches than the single crochet, but we'll be moving on from here to rows of triple crochet. So it's much easier to do in the triple crochet. But just pull out your yarn, pull your hook out. And what we're going to do is insert the hook in the back of that first stitch. Okay, so coming from the back, like I said, it's a little bit tricky in these small stitches to get your hook through but put your hook from the back through that, that first stitch hook your loop over it, your yarn over it and pull it through okay and then pull the yarn tight on your hook okay so perhaps I'll just show you that one more time so I'll just undo that. So once you've finished your round, just pull out a length to leave a loop. Insert your hook from the back of the first stitch through both loops. Hook your yarn over, pull it through to the back and then tighten and you may have to it might be a little bit hard to tighten if you've put your hook in the wrong way so you put your try your hook the other way and it might be easier to tighten okay so that's what we'll be doing to disguise that uh, seam a little bit now here's where you might want to start to use your stitch markers okay so I find them really handy in this 
in this pattern. So when, when you've got your seam in the center, place a stitch marker one on this each side right in the in the crease and you can if you want to then also place a third one right in the center of the back and I just tend to line that up with my center seam at the front so place one at the back and actually I'm just going to move this one one over so this is why it just helps you to locate those points and these are going to be the points of our increases okay at the sides and at the back okay so we're going to move on now to the triple crochet portion of the sweater so why I've used triple crochet in this is that it allows if you're taking your cat outside in the in the sweater it allows you to place it over top of the harness and insert your leash clasp through the sweater okay so this um yeah it's it's probably best as a in between season sweater so either a spring or an autumn it's not going to be the warmest obviously because it's got these holes in it but it does allow a leash clasp to go through it okay if you made it um, of a of a wool um, with a wool blend then it would be warmer than this one is here as you know this is an acrylic nylon blend so you could make it warmer but most likely it's going to be an in-between season sweater unless you live like we do in Marseille where you know our winters if you blink you miss them but it's you know it's this is definitely warm enough for Melba um, in you know it certainly it, you know it, on most of our winter days some of the winter days we need something a little bit warmer but um, generally she's going to be able to be fine in this with just a little bit of extra added warmth so we're going to move on to the triple crochet section so chain three And we're going to be increasing, like I said, at these side points and at the back. So for the next two rows, they will be the same as this row. So chain three, yarn over twice, and the, the chain doesn't count as a stitch. Okay, so go back into the stitch underneath the chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so that's your first triple crochet. And then you'll place one triple crochet in each stitch, except at the sides and the back, where you will increase, you'll make an increase. So you'll place two triple crochets at these points here, at your stitch marker points. Okay, so keep working around. And these these increase points are where you can you know make some adjustments to the sizing so our sizing we've worked out comes from our initial neck circumference measurement and then everything kind of follows on from there but if you estimate that you've got a cat that the neck circumference isn't proportional to the body you may want to either leave out these increases or you could leave out one of them perhaps leave out the one that's in the center here at the back and just increase at the sides so there's there's leeway for you to to keep trying this on your cat and fit it according to their proportions so obviously every cat is different I can't give you exact sizing for this this sweater but I would advise you to keep trying it on your cat and making sure that it fits okay so I'm going to show you just a kind of a standard sizing so if you don't have the cat that you're making it for with you then you know you can take the next circumference measurement and perhaps a, a little bit later when we move on to it but you will perhaps take a measurement across the chest and maybe a measurement underneath the belly but you can yeah you can probably use what I'm doing here and it'll most likely fit pretty well 
Okay, otherwise you can make those adjustments according to, to your particular cat's proportions. So keep going. Increase at the side. So let's just work along together to this first side and we'll make the first increase together. So just one triple crochet in each stitch until you get to the stitch marker. Just remove that. Place two triple crochets in that side point. Two in there. And then return your stitch marker to that first stitch in the increase. And then continue on working your triple crochets one in each stitch until you get to that next stitch marker, make an increase there or not. Like I said, you might judge that you don't need an increase here if you've got your cat with you and you're sizing it on your cat. Otherwise, come along with me, make an increase here, an increase here, and then we'll work all the way around and I'll meet you back here and we'll do that hidden seam stitch again together or that hidden seam technique together what it does is it just pushes your chain towards the back okay so keep on going and I'll meet you back when we get back round to the beginning of my row okay so I've finished my round one I'll just put that last triple crochet into that last stitch there and then we'll do the same technique as before just pull out the hook much easier to do it in these larger stitches just insert your hook underneath from the back underneath those both both those loops in that first stitch pull through your yarn and you may need to pull out your hook and put it in the different ways there's there's one way that it tightens easily that's yeah yeah that's not it I need to come in this way so just see which way tightens the easiest and what that does is it just hides it puts pulls the the um, chain to the back and just kind of hides that seam a little bit okay so that's row one now you're going to go ahead and repeat row one um, just as you've done so you will increase at the stitch markers again unless you're only increasing perhaps at the sides or, or at the back according to the fit for your cat but you're going to repeat row one and I'll meet you at the end of row two so just continue as before remembering that the chain does not count as a stitch because we're pushing it to the back and then go ahead and finish off your your round two now at this point if your cat's with you I'd advise that you just slip it over then their head check the the next circumference will be fine because you've you've measured and allowed for that just check that it's sitting okay over the shoulders you want it to be definitely not tight fitting you want it to be relatively loosely fitting so across the shoulders and around the chest is where that your cat's going to need the most movement in this sweater so make sure that it fits it fits well but it's not going to restrict movement at all so you want it in this upper portion of the sweater you want it to be a little bit looser than tighter okay so keep going for round two and I'll meet you back here okay so I'm just finishing off my row two here just making that now, of course, the you know disguising this seam is entirely optional. If you can't get your head around it and it's just too much of a bother, then you don't have to do it. You can just slip stitch to join in your rounds. Um, if you prefer, yeah, that's the better way. There we go. Okay. Okay. So there we have the first two rows. So at this point, if your cat's with you, I would definitely recommend trying it on, making sure that it's not too loose certainly not too tight and then at this point you're much better off to unpick and either add an increase or subtract an increase 
to make it fit your cat's particular sizing. So then we're going to move on to row three. Now in row three, we're going to create the areas that will eventually become the sleeves. And this is where I advise you, if you've got the uh, your cat with you, then take a measurement across um, from like arm to arm at the front, so across the chest. So not the full width of the chest, you want to take where the armholes need to fall. So from armhole to armhole, take a measurement there. So you've got a, a general idea of um, how wide your, or you know, what spacing you need for your front leg holes. So start row three in the same way as you have been doing, chaining three. And just keep in the back of your mind your measurement, okay? So here is where you might need to make an adjustment. So place your first triple crochet into that stitch underneath the chain, and then place a second triple crochet. So just bearing in mind that we're going to be mirroring the other side. So we've got two triple crochets on this side. We'll definitely need two on this side when we get round the other edge. But at this point, you can take your tape measure and work out where your the center of your leg holes needs to fall. So for Melba, um, between her legs, she's about 12 centimeters. So I need that to fall across here. So for Melba, what I'm going to do, and you may need to adjust this according to your cat's measurements, okay? If you're following me, just come along. I'm going to chain 11, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then I'm going to skip nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to place my next triple crochet in that tenth stitch. Okay. So just bear in mind again those measurements. Okay, so across the chest. So if that's my armhole, and just remembering that I'm going to mirror that on this opposite side, so it's going to be two triple crochets here, and then I'll skip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Obviously, I'll be working in the opposite direction, but the, the, the outcome will be the same. So sorry, I'll do that on camera a bit more clearly. So two triple crochets, then skipping nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, Eight nine will take me to there. Then I'll place my my triple crochet will be here. And like I said, obviously I'm working in the opposite direction, but I just want to keep in mind what the other side is going to look like. And then you'll just take your measurements from in between the center of those two. So you ideally you want the legs to fall right in the center of those armholes or those leg holes. So just eyeball that and make sure with your measurement and like I said Melba's 12 so that's going to take me pretty much in the center of those spaces okay and then you will continue on once you've worked out and so you can chain and skip as many as you like but as a general rule chain two more than you skip okay so for an example, you may need to remove this. If you need a larger leg hole, you may need to remove this second stitch here. And you may need to extend your leg hole out to the corner here. I wouldn't go, go past these side points. That's just going to, it's going to be too, probably too loose in nearly every situation. But you might, for example, chain 12 and skip 10. You might chain 10 and skip 8. So this is where that you need to work out a little bit um, f what is necessary for the cat you're making this for, okay? For Melba, it works to chain 11 and skip 9, okay? So moving on, I'll just remove that stitch marker. 
and continue on. So we're not increasing in this row. Sorry, I've got my stitch marker in my teeth. <laughs> so I'm not talking very clearly. So we're not increasing here, okay? So just place your stitch marker back into that stitch. And then continue working on. So you'll need the stitch markers for the next row. So keep them there if you're using them. So keep working along all the way down, no increase, unless you feel like you need it. Of course you can increase. If, you, if your cat's really wide across the shoulder blades, wide across the chest, you may need to increase here. You may need to increase here. So this is where, like again, this is where you can make all your sizing adjustments that suit your particular cat. So I don't need to make any more increases at this point. I'm going to keep going all the way around. And then I'm going to, again, count backwards and make sure that I'm leaving a mirror of this side. So I've got two here. So I'll leave two here, skipping my nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I just need to remember that the stitch after my stitch marker is going to be where I start my chain. Okay, so you just want to mirror exactly what you've done on the other side. So keep on going. And I'll finish my row three. You finish your, th your row three according to how you need it to be. And I'll meet you round once we get to the end of round three. Okay, so I'm round at my other side. And once again, just checking that I've got the mirror. One, two left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need one more stitch. Chaining 11, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you're just mirroring what you did in the last side. If you chained, if you chained 12 last time, you'll chain 12 this time. And then place your triple crochet into where you need it to be so you might have added j just one on this side you might have added three so do the same on at the end of this row as you did at the beginning of it and then of course we'll do that hiding the chain again And there we have row three. So we've started to create our leg holes. So once again, what I advise that you do is you just double check your measurement. So make sure that the measurement, you're pretty much right in the middle of, so for Melba's measurement of 12 centimeters across her chest, that's right in the between each of those leg holes. So perfect. So then I've still got lots of leeway for her, for room to move. Okay, so from here we'll move on to row four. So row four, again, it's an increased row but not at the, not at the stitch markers, okay? So we won't be increasing at the stitch markers, again, unless you feel like you need to, but um, for this pattern you won't be increasing here, but you've got... Um, extra stitches because of your chains because you've skipped two less than what you've chained so we're going to be increasing again by four on this round now you might have chained slightly more than that so you, well actually it'll still be a proportional increase yeah yeah so you've got you've skipped two more than you've chained so you're going to be increasing by those two on each side Okay, so just start your row the same way as before, placing triple crochets in those first stitches. And then once you get to your chain, you're going to be placing... Now, there's two ways you can do this. I prefer to 
place my stitches actually into the chain. Okay, like this. This works better for me. I think it makes a neater, a neater outcome. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to work into the armhole itself, you can certainly do that. Just work your, um, your 11 stitches or however many you've chained into the armhole. But I'm going to do it like this because, like I said, I think it just looks much neater. Just inserting your stitches actually into the chain. So keep on going. So as you can see, yeah, that looks really neat little armholes. So keep going, continue all the way around. So make your increases at the armholes. Just you'll just that'll just naturally happen. And if you feel you need to, you can increase again at the back. And this is where you can try it on your cat again. Just make sure that you're heading in the right direction as far as sizing goes. You could make an increase at the back. I'm not going to in this row, um, but the option's certainly there. So keep on going, either working your stitches into the armhole or into each chain as you move along and I'll see you at the end of row four. Okay so your sweater should be really starting to take shape now. So you've got the the leg holes done and now is where you again will have to you know measure and work out what you need to do for your cat but I'm going to start some decreases from here. So I've made this this top portion, um, so there's plenty of room for movement, but it's not too big. So I'm going to start making decreases. And now, for the next few rows, you will decrease at the stitch markers. Okay? Now, you may need to decrease at all stitch markers. You may need to decrease just at the side stitch markers. This is where you need to try it on your cat and see how um, fitted it is around the body. So now I've left plenty of room at the front. I want to start decreasing the, um, the sweater so it comes in and it fits quite nice and snugly around the belly area. So I don't know if it'll show up on camera. Yeah, maybe, maybe just... But um, what I've done on this one is it starts to come in and so it hugs around the, the belly area. So I did um, one, two, three, four more rows after this. Is that four? No, uh, just three. Three more rows after this. So here you'll need to take a measurement also of your the length that you want for, you know, for the back of the sweater so where do you want this part to fall underneath the belly so that's this part here okay so as you're moving towards the back of the sweater not counting this portion here yet we'll work about we'll measure about that later um, for that later but you want to work out where do you want this to fall underneath your cat's belly do you want it to go right towards the back legs or do you want it to sit more up underneath the ribs? So you can um, add as many rows as you like here, okay, depending on what you need. And you can include as many decreases as you need, okay. Now I'm going to decrease in each row and I'm going to add, I think, three more rows. Okay, so let's just move her along and do... Um, our one of our decrease rows together and I'll show you so it's just um, as simple as decreasing at either all of the stitch markers if you decrease on one side you obviously want to decrease on the other side so decreasing on the sides you may choose to no longer decrease at the back um, lots of options for sizing this for your individual cat okay but I like it now I've now I've made the top a little bit looser for movement. 
I like to make it relatively fitted around the, the body and the back portion. So I'm going to decrease in every row. So keep going. I'll meet you when I get to my first decrease. And uh, yes, see you soon. Keep, keep, just keep moving along with your triple crochets until you get to that first stitch marker. If you're making a decrease, you may not want to make a decrease in this round. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so I'm at my first stitch marker on the side here. So I'm going to make a decrease. I'll just take that stitch marker out. So I'm going to make a decrease. So start your triple crochet as you normally would. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two. Stop there. Yarn over, insert, sorry, yarn over twice. Insert your hook in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two. Yarn over, pull through, two. Yarn over, pull through, two. Yarn over, pull through, all three. So that's your decrease. Okay. Now I'll show you it again when I get to the next stitch marker, but until then just work one triple crochet in each stitch until you get to your next stitch marker. And don't forget to replace your stitch marker on this side into that decrease stitch. So replace that back in. And then move all the way along to the next stitch marker. Okay, so I'm at my next stitch marker in the center. So I'll just do the decrease with you here again. So yarn over twice, as you would for a normal triple crochet. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. And stop there when you have your three loops on your hook. Yarn over twice, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through another two, yarn over another two, and then you have three left on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so that's the decrease. Then I'll insert my stitch marker back into that space, and then I'll work triple crochets until I get to my next, next stitch marker and then I'll finish I'll do a decrease there and then I'll finish off the rest of this row so I'll meet you at the end of this row so this will be one two three four this is the end of row five I'm, only, I'm counting from when I started the triple crochets obviously we did this first row here of single crochets but it's fifth row of the triple crochets so I'll see you at the end of row five Okay, so I've just finished the end of my row five. So from here, I'm going to let you move on on your own. So you will finish as many rows as you need for your cat to end this part. So this is the, the part with the sleeves. So to end this part where you want it to fall on your cat underneath the belly. Okay, for me, I'm going to add... Uh, I think two more rows. Um, I may add an extra one, but I'm, I think I'm going to add two more rows here. Um, so it falls just underneath Melba's belly. Um, won't, it's not super close to the back legs, but it's sort of falling um, two-thirds of the way towards her back legs at the back. So you work out where you want that to fall and uh, measure that, that distance from the back underneath the the back legs to where you want it to fall on the belly and and crochet until you get to that length. Just bear in mind that um, we're adding this single crochet border so just allow a little bit extra, it's a little bit less than a centimeter I guess, so just allow a little bit extra for that single crochet border. And I will meet you once you've got to that point there, where it, whichever row this is for you, it's probably going to be either row 7, 8 or 9. You, if you've got an extra long or large cat, you might be going to row 10. Um, that's, like I said, of triple crochets. I haven't counted that first row down here. Um, I'm just counting the triple crochet rows. So you may go anywhere from row 7 up to row 10 let's say, for um, 
you know most sort of cat sizes so I'll see you once you get to that length there and we'll start to make this back portion here and then we'll add on the sleeves okay and just before I leave you here I just want to quickly say that you can continue with your your decreases if you want to or once you've decreased a couple of rows you can just make it make it straight so again I hope that's not confusing for you and um, you feel free to um, you know size this for your own cat it's a, it's about the best I can do I, I wish I could uh, give you more exact sizing but you know every cat is different so I'm going to have to throw it to you to work out the exact sizing that you need and how many decreases you want to make on this on this last portion here so uh, like I said I'll see you once you've reached that length that you want to for underneath the belly and uh, catch you soon okay so I've gone as far as I want to go with the length underneath the belly so I'm just going to yarn over and pull through and snip off that end so now we're going to start with the back portion so here you'll need to make a measurement for how far you want it to fall down the back so I've added an extra one two three four rows so um, that, yeah, like it's, it's going to be different for every, every case. So you may want it to be quite long and fall quite, you know, almost to the tail. Or you might want it a bit shorter. It's entirely up to you. So we're just going to start with that back portion now. So you'll take your end of yarn and you're going to, so... You've got your stitch markers in the sides and they might have migrated just slightly because of your increases and decreases. So what you can do is you can pull those out now. And now you're going to figure out where you want to start. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. So you can... So what I've done with this previous one is this sort of wraps underneath... The belly a little bit along the sides of the back so hopefully that makes sense so it kind of comes underneath the belly along the sides here um, you don't have to do it that way you can you can tie on right in the right in the corner here so it's just this back edge that's covered you don't have to have that bit that wraps around the sides but I kind of like that little bit that, that just wraps slightly. So I'm going to start, I'm going to tie on just a few stitches in. Let's say I'll tie in. So you want to mirror it so it'll be your, your mirror on the other side. So I might go back to my stitch marker actually. And let's say I want to start. So this is just quite arbitrary. It's entirely up to you where you, how, you know, how far you want it to wrap around. I think I'll leave one, two, three, four... And that's my side stitch there. So I think I'll leave two, three, four. I'm going to tie on here. Okay. So then I just want to mark it on the other side. So there's my side stitch. And one, two, three, four. So that's where I want to finish. So I'm just going to mark, mark that. Okay. So one, two, three, four. So we'll just tie on here. So we'll just insert your hook. Pull up your yarn and you're going to chain three and then pull that tight then just continue with your single crochet, uh, sorry, your triple crochets so now this chain is going to count as a stitch so move along to the next one and I'm going to work in my tail as I move along you can just weave that tail in at the end if you want to but I'm going to I'm going to start to work it in so move along to the next stitch place your triple crochet and next stitch 
So you, what you're going to do is you're just going to work triple crochets all the way around until you get to your um, stitch marker on the other side. Okay, and then we're going to work backwards and forwards. So keep going, place one triple crochet in each stitch all the way around the back side until you get to this marker here. And I'll start the next row with you. So just to show you what I'm doing with that tail, I've worked in plenty there. So I'm just going to snip off that end and then keep on working. Okay, so I'm coming up to my stitch marker on the other side. I'll just pull that out now and place my last stitch in there. So now I'm just going to work backwards and forwards between those two ends. So chain three here and again that will count as a stitch. So move into the next stitch and just place your triple crochets all the way around moving oh sorry off camera so moving all the way around until this side chaining three and then you'll go backwards and forwards however many times you need to to create the length on the back that you want for your for your sweater so keep on going and just working your triple crochets back and forward, back and forward until you reach the length that you want. And I'll come back once I'm at the length that I want for my sweater. Okay, I just want to check in with you. Just make sure that you don't miss that stitch on the end of each row, just above the chain there. Okay, and so I'm just making my next turn. I've done two rows here. I'm going to do, I think two more will probably be enough. So my chain counts as my first stitch. Oops. Yeah, I'm just split. My chain counts as my first stitch, so I'll move on to the next stitch. And then I'll keep going backwards and forwards again. So... I'll catch you at the end. Okay, so I'm at the end of the length that I want for my sweater. And sorry, just ignore those tails. I uh, will sew them in. That's just where I changed my yarn ball. Um, so, yeah. So now if you want to, it's only optional, but we're going to place a single crochet border around this area here. And like I said, it's only optional. Um, now... What I do is I chain one and I turn my work and then I go, so the stitches are facing the right way and then I just go along and place one single crochet in each stitch along the top of that last row. And then, so I go all the way along here, and then when I get to this, this side bit, what I tend to do is place a single crochet in the center of either the chain or the stitch, depending which row you're on, and then one at the top of the, top of the row. But do the best you can to evenly space them down these sides, and that won't be super easy, but um, do the best that you can and try to go actually into the stitches and the chain and rather than in the hole. Otherwise, you'll get these sort of big holes that won't look so great. So I'm going to work along the top here and then I'll meet you at this corner and I'll just show you what I do down this side. Okay, so I'm just at the, the side here and I'm going to place my hook into the center of, in this instance, it's a chain, and do my first single crochet. And then I'll move along to the top of that row and single crochet. So yeah, they'll just be evenly spaced along that side. So next one into the center of that triple crochet. So you'll do your best with your work, evenly spacing your 
single crochets along that edge. So let's go in there. And be careful not to do it too tight or, I mean, it's a little bit of tightness is good because it'll help to wrap the, the edges around the, the body of your cat. But you don't want to do it too tight so it misshapes the, the, um, the garment. So do the best that you can down those sides. And then along, obviously along here, it's going to be super easy. You'll just be placing one single crochet into each stitch. And I'm going to, when I get to the center here, I'm going to work in this, this tail. So, just placing one, there's my tail, I'll work that in, or you can just weave it in at the end if you want to, I'm going to work mine in. And then I'll keep working around and I'll move up the other side, so you can see that this just it just neatens the the edge. I like I like neatening up these side edges. So entirely optional. You don't have to do it, but I just like the finish that it gives to do so. So I'm going to keep moving along until I get up here. And one of the techniques I didn't mention at the beginning, actually, and again, it's only an optional technique, but I'll show you how to finish on this edge so we can't see where our finish is. We'll do a little invisible stitch. So um, keep on going, and I'll meet you up at this corner. Okay, so I've just placed my last, uh, my last single crochet along that side edge. And now I'm just going to, don't, don't yarn over and pull through, just pull out a length of your yarn. And we're going to do that invisible stitch so you won't be able to see where you've finished. So snip off a tail. So just a reminder, don't yarn over and pull through, just pull out your yarn. Thread your darning needle. And then locate your, your first stitch, so not the chain, remember you made a chain at the beginning there, ignore that, but find that first stitch, which for me will be this one here, and bring your needle under both loops, okay, so under both loops, pull through, so we're basically just sewing a stitch. And then what we'll do is we'll bring our needle back down through the center of that last stitch. Okay, back down through the center and come on to the inside so you can weave on, weave in your end. So what you've basically just done there is sew in a stitch. Okay, and then I'll just continue and weave in my tail down one of these, one of these stitches. So it just finishes it off nice and neatly. Just be careful not to pull it too tight, otherwise you'll defeat the purpose of not being able to see it because it'll be tighter than the stitches around it. So just make it the same tension as the stitches around and then just weave backwards and forwards with your tail a few times. I'll just finish one more through I like to go if you for projects like this go through three times is a good is a good number so I just snip off that excess and then so and again ignore, please ignore those tails I'll do those off camera and then what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet along around the neck here so we're going to tie on with our yarn and what I like to do is I like to tie on just um, a little bit away from this from this um, center point here so I tend to come so there's my seam that I slip stitched I like to come um, actually I'm going to go this side of it I'm going to come in this side of it and I'm going to 
yarn over, pull through and chain one and then just tug on that end and I'm going to work in both of my tail ends so I've got one here from my starting tail and then one here from where I've just tied on so I'm going to just place again evenly spaced so same as you did for this row here around the other edge of the neck that we did before we started our triple crochet rows you're just going to place one single crochet and it's a little bit tricky in that seam spot find as best you can a place to put a stitch across that seam or you you know you might have started on the seam and then one single crochet evenly spaced and either working in your tails or not again you can weave them in at the end one single crochet at approximately at the top of each row let's just make sure I've got those tails pulled nice and tight so approximately one at the top of each row working your way around just as you did like I said on that on that very first single crochet row just do the same thing so I'm going to work all the way around and we'll do that little invisible stitch to to um, complete our round again so it's nice and neat finish so keep going and I'll meet you back at this point here okay so I've just finished my last single crochet there so I'm just going to pull out my yarn and snip off my end and I apologize I'm losing daylight here so the light is a little bit bright reflecting off this white so I'm going to have to finish the filming tomorrow so thread your needle again I'll just finish this bit off before I lose daylight completely. So um, find the first stitch you did and put your needle through both loops. Pull it up. Don't pull too tight. So you've created one half of your stitch. And then you'll go back into the center of the last stitch you did. Bring it into the side that you want to weave in your end and you can't see where you've where you've finished it makes a nice neat finish so I'm just going to weave this tail in the back here okay so we've done the finished off the border around the neck and at this point you can leave uh, you can leave your sweater just like this without sleeves so this way is um, actually quite nice to leave um, completely unrestricted movement you know if you've sized it well then this way will not restrict movement um, you know like I said if you fitted it well um, if you want to move on and add the sleeves that look cute but they might not be practical for your your cat I'll we'll move on now and I'll show you how to add sleeves into this one so on this one here this green one I've added two uh, rows for the sleeves you can make little half sleeves so just adding one row or you can make uh, these longer sleeves so it's entirely up to you from here if you want to stop here then um, totally fine otherwise we'll move along and we'll add some sleeves to this one okay so we're going to tie on into these corners now I usually tie on in the in in a corner here but you can tie on wherever you like it it doesn't matter since we're working in the round so I just pull up a loop and then chain one and then just tighten make sure everything's nice and secure there now you'll chain two more to make your chain of three and then that will count as a stitch so now we're going to move around and just place one triple crochet into each of the stitches around the edge of your armhole. So 
So just move around, placing your triple crochets in each stitch. So obviously when you, and you could have worked in your tail there, I, I didn't do it this time, but you could work in the, your tail there. Now, once you get to here, then you will treat these edges as you did along these edges here. And then you'll work into the chain and then back along here. So I'll meet you when I get back around to this other side. Okay, so just to come back to you here for a moment, I uh, worked in my, went back and worked in my tail. So I'm just going to snip off that end. But then I just wanted to show you in this, in this, uh, on these side parts, you'll you'll work it like I said, just similar to to what you did up here. So one in the corner, and then you'll place one triple crochet in the center of. And you may even want to place two if you want if you want looser um uh, looser sleeves, then you could place two along the side here. I'm just going to place one, and then I'm going to move along to the corner, place my triple crochet in the corner, and then start to work down around this this other side. So I'll go first into that chain and then into each chain all the way along here. So yes, as I said before, I'll meet you back at the beginning here. Okay, so I'm back around at my starting point. Now you can decide if you need to put another stitch in that corner there. I'm just going to come across and slip stitch. I'm not going to try and disguise the the seam like we were here. Um, yeah, so from here you can go around and do another round if you want a longer sleeve like I showed you on this green one before. I'm going to stick with just one row on my sleeve for the white one. So if you want to, now I'm hoping that this will show up on camera because I'm not going to demonstrate it today on camera. But if you want to add another row to your sleeve, then you might want to consider making some decreases. So what I did on this, this one here is I did another row, but every second stitch was a decrease. So you can see here, here's my chain where I started. Here's my first stitch. And then I did a decrease stitch decrease so every second stitch I did a decrease and that's the same triple crochet decrease that we did in the in the rows in the main part of the sweater okay so you can go ahead and do that if you want to you may not decrease um, that dramatically um, you may just decrease in every second stitch and that will depend on the fit on your cat on um, you know how you want it to look so if you like the looser sleeves, then you maybe wouldn't decrease as much. If you want them to become a little bit more fitted as they move down the leg, then you would perhaps consider decreasing like I've decreased here. Okay, so we're going to move on, and that's all I'm going to say about that second row, about lengthening the sleeves. So we're going to move on to this finishing row here. Okay, so... It's just a single crochet finish row, so chain one, and then start to single crochet. Now I'm going to offer you the option in this row, is you can decrease in this finishing row if you want to, just to pull in the, the whole of the sleeve a little bit. Again, if you want to just leave it loose, go ahead and do one single crochet in each stitch in the round. Otherwise, you can consider doing a decrease. So, yarn over, pull through, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so you can you can decrease here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease in the center of this on in each side of the sleeve and on the sides. So I'm just going to pull it in slightly. So you could pull it in even more than that if you want to. Just make sure that you've got the fit right on your cat. And you don't need to pull it in at all. You could just do, like I said before, your single crochets all the way around. So let's just do one. No, let's make my decrease here on the side. 
single crochet decrease and then I'll single crochet around to the center of the other side so let's see where it yes we'll decrease here So, you know, these decreases are just optional. I just want to give you as many options as, as I can to allow you to fit this to your individual cat. So, it's a little bit more advanced than just beginner crochet in this pattern. But, you know, just try not to be too afraid of, of uh, working out what you need. I mean, that's the, the beauty of crocheting something yourself. You can really work out the sizing for your own cat. Okay, so I've made a decrease in the sides here and these sides here. I've just made my last one there. Now, let's do a invisible stitch again. Just to make sure all our finishings are nice and neat. So take your darning needle and make your invisible stitch. So of course, so that's my chain, there's my first stitch, down through the center of the last stitch and then I'll weave in my tail and I'll do that off camera. So. Go ahead and finish off your second sleeve, just obviously exactly the same as you've done your first sleeve, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so there you have it, your finished sweater. So I've gone through and I've made my second sleeve and I've woven in all my ends, so I'm done. So congratulations, as always I would love to see photos of your cat wearing his or her sweater. So please send those along either to email catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media catventurous.crochet and you'll find us on a variety of social media so uh, check, us, check, check out all those details down on the description box below. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and hope to catch you soon. Bye. <laughs> What's that look, Melba? What's that look? Okay, ready? <laughs> Melba. Hey, baby. Good girl. What a good girl. Bye. I think it's afternoon nap time. Hey, Melba. Good girl. Thanks, baby. You're a good girl, Melba. What a good girl.